Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna go over differentials and how to tune them. Now, this is a Typhon 6S. It's a pretty simple platform, and the way the differentials come out is the same for all of the success cars put out by Arma. All the way up to the Mojave, they're the same thing. So what we're gonna show you on how to get these out applies to all of them. However, if you've got a different branded car, if you've got a Traxxas, HPI, Associated, Losi, whatever, they may be a little different to get out, but they're all usually pretty similar. Once you get the differential out and follow the manual, it'll show you how to get there. Once you get the differential out, they're all built about the same way, which makes it simple to work on. Now, I, the way I do it works for me. It's not the only way out there, and I understand that. So if you buy all the different oils and you adjust the front diff and the middle diff and the rear diff, and you spend all the time to get the oil thicknesses just right, that works and it's proper. However, I'm gonna show you a shortcut and it's tunable and it costs a lot less and the outcome is predictable. So let's get it on the bench, let's pull it apart and I'll show you how to do it. So what we're doing here is we're gonna get into this one here and we're going to pull that differential out and we're going to stiffen it up substantially. And just to show you, there's four bolts here that have to come out. This one, this one, that one, and that one. And that'll allow us access to the differential. There we go. All four. One, two, three, four. So that gets these loose. So now it should, by rights, I should be able to grab onto it right here and pull this right out and get the lights out of the way. I added the lights to it. How does I run at night sometimes? There we go. And that lifted straight out. And it's a pretty simple piece. Um, this slides in to these rails and it holds the differential right in place. So there's the differential right here. And now that the housing's gone, which covered this area, this should slide straight out. So grab it by the edges, and that's right by these driveline hubs, and pop it out. There we go. There, it does come out. It can be a little bit stubborn. Um, this one does have a little dirt in there, so that's gonna need to be cleaned up. Also inside the housing, you can see the pinion down in there and that drives this ring here. And remember, the ring gear goes on the left. There is actually a pocket down, here, let's set this aside. There's actually a pocket down inside there in the chassis itself. So that'll help you know where that's gotta go. Let's get these out, set these aside. And, now we're going to work on this. This is the main, the main reason we're here on this particular part. And this is kind of a goopy job, so I like to wear gloves while I do this. And keep them oils off your hands. And we're just going to take a rag to start with and we're going to clean all these, this grease off the outside. Just sort of Get as much of it out of there as you can because we're going to have this thing open. We don't want any of this debris getting down inside of it. Okay, now if you have any debris down inside of this tooth area, just use a little toothbrush and you can see when you get the dirt out of it. Get it as clean as you possibly can just to have the debris out. You know, it's there's some right down in there a little bit cleans right out. Mostly that's grease anyway, but it doesn't hurt to clean them up good. Never hurts to clean them up. There we go. So now that's doable. So we're going to pull this apart. There we go. So you have, before I get this tore apart, you have four screws. One, two, three, four. This will allow the housing to come apart and you'll have access to the internals. So back these off. You can take them, take them out in any order you want, but there is a way to put them back in, and I'll show you that in a minute. And let's 
to use this one for these. So we're going to get oil in that and I don't want to bathe all my bolts in oil. There we go. Now, to open this, it's pretty simple. Keep the bell down and just pop the top off of it. There we go. And you'll see the lubrication that's in there. This one was filled pretty good, and we're going to drain it a little bit. Um, I'm going to jam an earplug in there. I want this one pretty stiff, but I'm going to leave some of the oil in it. It does give it the chance to give. If the car hits funny, it'll allow it to slip instead of breaking parts. So we're going to drop this one there. We'll take our reg and we'll clean this off. There we go. Now, I'm going to spray a little silicone lube on there just to give me something to clean it up with. There we go. Like so. And there. It's surprising how that silicone lube actually gets all that off. It does a really good job and it's a lubricant it's not a stripper so it won't affect the gasket if you look down in here right on this edge there's the gasket that goes around you want to keep that in place if you can make sure you get it right in the back right back in the same spot when you put it back together That should be just about right. I don't, like I say, I don't want to get all the oil out, but I want to get a good amount of it out because I want that oil's lubrication. So you can see that working in there. There's still a little bit of oil down in there. Let's take just a little bit more out. There we go. Because uh, this is the rear differential. I want it locked up pretty good. So let's just grab an ear plug here. And these are just flexible, moldable, just regular silicone earplugs, and these work really well. Now, if I was trying to get a specific feel out of the car, I would go with, uh, I would go with a certain weight of oil, but since I'm more or less locking the rear end up, I'm going to go ahead and use the earplug and it's a little easier to put in if you use slightly smaller pieces. I am going to try and get the whole thing in there, but half at a time definitely helps. So put it right down in the, in the center there and mash it in as tight as you can get it. Now you are going to get some oil up because it is down in there, but you mash it down in, get it in there as good as you can. And since I left the oil in there, it won't actually lock it completely, which is what I'm looking for. So there's kind of a happy medium you have to find. And you see the oil coming up around it a little bit here, a little bit there. Clean that off. Fold this in so it doesn't cover the ring at all. I want to have that ring clean, like so. Now, this sticks in a little, so we want to have this depressed just a little down in the middle. There we go. Get it all inside, like that. Then, make sure you line up the holes so they go back together correctly like so. Look down through. You can see where the holes are. So as you rotate that through, you can see that's a plate, that's a plate, there's a hole. So now that's lined up correctly. Push it down and we'll put our screws back in. Now I'm not going to run this down tight. I'm just going to get it down close. 
like so, so the top is still movable a little bit if you need to, to uh, line up the other screws. Don't torque anything down until you have them all in, so. And when I'm building these, I resist the urge to use one of these. And the reason for that is I like to run these in by hand because this is still just plastic. And if you run them in quick, it'll overheat them and you may have trouble with these backing out. So I do these by hand. It keeps them nice and nice and tight as they go in. Plus you can feel how tight you're getting things and you won't accidentally over tighten one. So by hand is definitely a help. There we go, one more to get started. Now, if this feels funny when you're putting it together, pull it back apart and make sure you don't have any clearance issues. The inside can move a little bit in there, so um, make sure that things sit right. Once you get them down close like that, test feel it, make sure everything turns. It does turn. Let's see how we go. That's a little tighter, but the oil in there is making it a lot looser than I want it to be. It does have more resistance to it, but I'm looking to get something closer to this one where you have to fight it some. It does turn, but you have to fight it a little bit. So we may have to go through here and put a little bit more inside. Now, taking it apart more than once isn't a bad thing. Um, basically, you're trying to get the right resistance inside. And what that means, you may have to test fit it and try it a couple of times to get the right consistency, what you're looking for in there. It's easier if you use a certain weight oil, pull all the internals out, clean it out, put a certain weight in there. It's easier to get it more consistent that way. Um, but I kind of like doing it this way. Mostly because I like wrenching on these things in the first place. So let's have a look at it. There we go. Now the issue is this has been able to turn real easy inside that earplug. So it just didn't quite get juiced in there the way it should have. So let's clean it out and get some more in there. Okay, so we're going to ram another one down in there. We'll probably only use half of one this time. Let's get half of one. There we go. That's half. No dirt, no debris. Okay. There's some more oil coming out now. It's looking a little better. Let's give that a try. Definitely feeling tighter in there. Nice. There we go, coming together now. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll have a look at it, see where our bolts are. Now you'll see this, this piece came off. It's in here now, but it's just, you gotta line this pin up with that slot and put it back together and 
that's all there is to it. These pop right off. So it's not like you have any difficult issue getting those out. They come apart pretty easily, really. Um, they can get worn and become a little stubborn to get off, but they usually don't have any issues. Okay, so that mashed it all down in there nice. Okay, so I'll line those holes up and put her back together. Good. Like I say, don't tighten it, just get it down close. It's just supposed to hold it in place. There we go. That's better. And once this warms up a little, it'll mix that in there. Yeah, that's better than it was. It's not locked up by any means. Okay, now when you tighten these, little test, yeah, there's a little resistance in there now. It's not locked up at all, and it, I do have to pinch it pretty good, but it moves easy enough. So um, you want to do this in a cross pattern because this is a round device. If you go around in a circle, you can bind it and leave a gap here underneath. I know it doesn't seem like it'll do that, but it can. So one, two, three, four, the way you would the lug nuts on your car. So when you're changing tires, so get this one down, not going to tighten it a lot, get it down snug. Cross it over, do the same thing, get her down snug, not torqued, just snug, like so. Jump to this one. And then we're going to cross back up to this one. There we go. Now they're all snug. Now we can start to bring them down. So let's get on this one. That one's tight. That one's tight. That one's tight. And that one's tight. Now keep in mind, you're still screwing into plastic, so do not over tighten them. And there you have it. Now we have a much tighter differential. It's a lot tighter now once I tightened it down. So it feels really good. It still allows turn, but it's pretty tight once we torqued it. So that's good. This is now ready to go back in the car. Now, just as we did before, we want to take a look inside of here and see how dirty that is. And it's not bad in there, really. It's not bad. The grease is a little dark, but it's still in pretty good shape. Let's get in there and wipe a little of it out. Okay, good. So now that's not bad in there. Pretty good. It's not completely clean, but I don't think that's going to matter too much. So what we want to do is, this is kind of tricky to put in unless you want to drop the hubs and do the axles later. Um, you can do it all at once and keep in mind that these have a big ball and a small ball. And let's clean these up real quick. Okay, so the big ball goes on the wheel side. So you just tuck it into the wheel first, like so. And this can be a little bit of a struggle to get in here, so can be but won't necessarily so you want to get these cups get the axle in the cup like so let's get this one in if we can come on now there we go get in there 
like so. Okay, so the axles will go in there. Now it's just a matter of getting things lined up. So it'll go in the housing. There we go. So the axles are lined up in there. Pretty good. Well enough. Make sure I don't have any shim issues. This one didn't have a shim on it at all. So I don't have to fight the, shrimp, the shim, which is nice. There you go. Once you line it up, it slid right in without very, it took very little pressure to slide it in there. And now it's lined up good. Now before we can seal this up, we need to get some lithium grease on here. So just regular lithium grease. There you go. And we're gonna roll that through there. Keep this lubricated. So let's give it a nice bead across there. We want to roll it. Oh, easy does it. Get a little more on this section. There we go. And if you look, this will roll with the front wheels like so. And it evenly coats everything. So now we're good to go. Okay, so when you put this in, this one still has, it still has this bar attached and this is the sway bar. So you want to feed that in over the top of the axles, but underneath the top bars. Then you want to line up and this has, so you see this, this has slots right here on both sides that line up with those lower rails, so you have to get those lined up. And you have to put it in right side up. That's important. There we go. There we go. Right in place, slid right in. The tough part on this is lining up uh, the rails so that you shouldn't have to force it down in there. Don't give it any torque like that. It should slide in relatively easy. If you've got it lined up right, it should slip right into place. New ones can be a bit stubborn though. That is true. Kind of long-winded screws, but it holds a lot of pressure, so. Where's it upper one? Right there. So I like to put these in the same way I do the other ones, cross them up. And I'm not tightening them down yet, I'm just getting them down snug. See if you can see where I'm going here. Something, there's another one up the top right, top left here. Okay. Now the last one, which is this bottom one here. Okay, now we can cross tighten these one. Two, three, and four. There we go. So now the differential is in there and it's got more resistance in it. Notice they still move so it's not locked up, but it does allow for more positive type traction in the back when you're trying to slide it. That'll help these break loose a little bit in the corners. Okay, now what we want to do 
as we need to line these up to get your sway bar on. Like so, and just snap it on. Like so. They pop right on, easy peasy. There we go. Same thing on this side. They go on nice and simple. Just like that. So now the sway bar's intact. Now we'll put the lights back on it, put those two bolts back in it. And that's these longer ones here, like so. And I'm going to go right through the wing mount with that. Like that. There we go. Good. That's one. Here we go. Like so. There. Got to get through the shock mount and then it'll roll right in. There. Nice and neat. And the lights are installed again right here and it, the wing mount bolts are all back in place so the rear end is done. So the beautiful part of this is that's all that's involved. Four screws and this pops out. Um, just access granted you have the two on the top and I only took those out because this brace that I put in for the lights interfere with that bolt. That's why I took it out. Now we can go ahead and install the rear wing. And I know this isn't the wing that goes on it, so you don't need to call me out on that because this has got the widening kit on it, so I put the Creighton wing on it. Um, it looked a little weird, in my opinion, with the stock wing on there and the widening kit. So this has got a little wider stance than the stock Typhon. And to give you a demonstration what I mean by that, here we go, let's put this on first. There we go. Body on. Okay. So to give you a demonstration of what I mean by that, here is the widened Typhon, and there's a stock one. If I line those wheels up, you can see how much wider this is. It's wider by a whole tire with the widening kit on it, so that makes it more stable in the corners. However, it does give it the potential for breaking things a little easier because the farther you get from your swing point, the more leverage and impact has, the more it can transfer that damage to the car itself. So putting the, putting the widening kits on them, it does leave more room for failure in the car. If you're gonna be jumping, I wouldn't jump this with the widening kit on it. If you're gonna jump it, make it narrow again. Get rid of the widening kit. This is for screwing around on the ground. The reason I tightened up the rear differential and the center diff is so it will react more like the Limitless. Um, the Limitless has a spool in the center and it's pretty tight in the back. Even the UDR, which is a Traxxas vehicle, it's got a solid axle in the back and that really helps with drifting. You know, as you're sliding it around, it breaks both tires loose and not just one. The problem is when you got an open diff, let's turn this around for you. The problem is when you have an open diff and the weight shifts, okay, so you get it up like this and it's crouched in a corner, this tire is going to balloon because it's going to transfer all the power to the outside tire and you won't get the car to slide because this one will maintain traction. Now with the, all, the diff, all the diffs open, it does handle a little better, but you don't have the speed and the pickup that you get when you have everything locked up. Now I leave the front one alone, I like that one to get a little traction, I don't want to break them loose the way that would happen. So in that particular aspect, I leave the front diff open. But I do like to lock down the center one, um, spool style. And what that does is 
no matter what's going on, when you pin the throttle on this thing, it's going to crouch and it's going to lift and it won't transfer the extra power to the front. It'll spin those or you'll get traction and it'll stand. That's where your grunt comes from is getting rid of that center diff or at least locking it down pretty tight. In the rear, that eliminates, see how that spins that one? This one's in the air, that one's got weight on it, still spins it. You get into a corner and punch it, it'll spin them both and it'll allow the back end to come around for you. It takes a little bit more to drive it that way, but that's my driving style. So there you have it. The Typhon is now repaired from its water damage and the upgrades are in place. Okay guys, so there you have it, the rebuild on the Typhon. Now, you know, this is, uh, it's a little difficult at times because you may have to open your diff a few times, but this is to save money and it's kind of a car hack if you want the truth. The right way to do it is to order up all the oils, you know, do some research, find out what you want. You know, you want 30,000, you want 150,000, you want 50,000, whatever you want, you can buy those oils and use them. The problem is, and I checked, average cost for those oils is between $15 and $25 for two ounces. And that may not seem like much. There's one weight, there's another weight, there's another weight. That can cost you up to $75 if you know exactly what weights you want. Let's say, for example, you order up your oils and the rear one isn't what you want it to be. 15 to 25 dollars to buy another bottle to sort that out. Now, when we do with the silicone, what we're doing is we're buying 12 silicone pairs, and I, I checked this today, and right now I can buy 12, pole, uh, 12 pair of moldable silicone earplugs for 15 dollars, and that will last a long time. So what you saw in my little packet I, those hold three pairs. So I got a whole bunch of those for $15. Now, the thing is, if I want to sip in the rear up, I don't have to order new oil. I just stick another quarter of an earplug in there and adjust it. Check this out. I do not recommend that you do this. What I'm doing here is strictly for the demonstration so you'll get an idea of what it is. You can do the same thing with the diff in the car, hold one wheel and give it some power and it'll turn the other wheel and that'll let you know what your resistances are before you take it out you can feel that already so you pick your car up and you just feel the resistance that's in there okay if you want to get a little stiffness in there open your diff put a quarter of an earplug in to start with seal it back up and feel it and what i mean by that is here i've got an exb front diff and it's destroyed on the outdrives. We'll do a future video on this, um, repairing this. We'll get in depth on the shimming. We'll go into the internals a bit more and we'll show you how that's done. This one is simply a demonstration for this video. So you can do the same thing by grabbing the outdrives and these are tore up so I got gloves on. Um, but just feel what the resistance is. And you're just turning them against each other like so. The centerpiece shouldn't be turning. You're just using the internal gears there. And you'll feel what the resistance is. This turns so easy that it's pretty much wide open, okay? Now, if you want to stiffen this up also, and you can do this, and what I did was I took a power tool and I cut off a drive shaft and just stuck it in there to give me some drive. Now, this can be a little sketchy, so I don't recommend doing this at home. This is simply for the demonstration, and I am wearing cut-proof gloves to protect myself because these edges can get sharp, <clears throat> and I don't want this to spin out and get out of control. So putting the drive shaft in the out drive like so, you can turn this up and watch that turn. Now you can feel the resistance when you spin it up a little and that's what will happen when you add power to the car. So we'll spin this up and you can feel the resistance. Now there's not very much in there. When I add one quarter of an earplug and spin it up, you'll feel it integrate that earplug into the oil and it'll stiffen it up some. You can do this step after step until you get the thickness you're looking for. When you're done with that, and what I mean is, if you cut out one earplug into quarters and you put one quarter in, test it, put another quarter in and test it until you get what you want, count how much of the earplug is left and if you use two, 
count the remainder and you'll know roughly what it takes to get the stiffness you want out of what's left. So what it is is if you use all but half of one of the two earplugs, you know you put one and a half earplugs in it. So when you go to address the next differential, you're going to know that one and a half diff of earplugs is going to get you the diff resistance that you're looking for. Now one and a half is an example. You might run three quarters of an earplug to get what you're looking for. An example is you might put, and this is just an example, you might put a quarter of an earplug in the front. You might actually put one and a half in the center and you might only put three quarters in the back depending on how you like your car to drive. The difference being using the earplugs, although it is a little bit more involved, it's infinitely cheaper. But there is something that you have to keep an eye on. And what I mean is, if you go to clean these out, let's say you've run it for a while and you want to rebuild the inside or you have trouble with your differential, this is a lot stiffer material than say oil. It, now the heavyweight oils don't just drain out anyway, but the silicone can be a little more involved to clean out. Not a big deal. Um, like I showed you before during the build, the regular silicone spray does have a tendency to break it down, makes it a little easier to get out. However, you still kind of need to get in there and just sort of dig it out, pull the internals out of it, dig some more out and get it apart. Since it's a much thicker oil or silicone, um, it does take a little bit more to clean out, but it's not all that difficult. It just is a little more involved. Okay guys, there you go. The silicone hack rebuild for the differentials. And you know, I'm aware that the purists out there are gonna go, oh my God, you're not using the oils that you're supposed to use. You know, when they started using those oils, someone had to try it too. The silicone works, I haven't noticed any adverse effects. It takes a little more to dial them in to get them the same each time. But if you keep track of what you put in and you, you know, meter it out nice and easy and test each one, you can get these to the weights that you're looking for. It's completely tunable. And the thing is, if you decide you want a little stiffer, a little more resistance, you don't have to go buy another thing of oil. You just add a little more silicone to it until you get what you're looking for. So cost for cost, for $15 you can do, I don't know, how many cars? You can do a lot because the silicone earplugs for 12 pair right now, and I just checked this, you can get 12 pair for like 15 bucks. So that's cheap because you can make any resistance you want for that same $15 and you get enough earplugs to do probably every car in your collection. So that's a real savings considering, let's say you're buying the oils for this and you want three different weights. You could be up to $75, but if you misjudge and you actually need a stiffer oil in the middle or the back, you're going to spend another $15 to $25 for another bottle of oil when all you have to do is add another silicone. What do you think, guys? You know, leave it in the comments down below. What do you think? Is it good? Is it bad? You know, it's, it's okay either way. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. However, when you're leaving comments, Please don't do bashing on people and don't be super negative. This is supposed to be helping people in the hobby, not trashing. So if you get to trashing on people, I will block you from the channel. And I don't want to have to do that. So, hey, you know, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It means more here than you could possibly know, and it's awesome when you do. So, until next time, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studio saying... Keep wrenching, guys.